Welcome back to Bead Digger Stadium. John Beltran with Dave Urich. The Bead Diggers are coached by Randy Dreitz in his 10th year. The assistants are Ron Albo, Lance Schwentz, Dick Creighton, Matt Manier, Ken Garcia, and David Cummings. The Bead Diggers in their home maroon. And meanwhile, Eaton in the white jerseys in the road, uh, red pants. They're coached by Bill Mont, Arlen Ball, Kevin Ross, Dean Grable, Logan Lacey, Dick Loftus, and Dave Alvarez are the assistants. And the Bead Diggers will receive first and Normally, Dave, they've been accustomed to playing defense for us this season. Yeah, I'm not sure. I I could I wasn't paying good enough attention to see who won the won the toss. But uh, if Eaton did win it, then they must have deferred to us and chose. You know, ended up being able to kick the ball, and they're going to have that big wind at their back and and try to put us deep in the hole right off the bat. Opening kickoff brought to you by Ingmeyer Phillips Insurance, locally in Fort Morgan and Brush, offering home, health, auto, farm, business, and workers' compensation insurance. Ingmeyer Phillips Insurance to kick it off for Eaton will be. Ismael Mendoza, the 6'2", 180-pound senior. And it looks like the game-breaker, Eric Garcia, is back to receive. I mean, he's a sophomore, but let's face it, he does virtually everything on this team. Not the only player. We have other B-diggers, obviously, that contribute. But for a sophomore, he does quite a bit than many other sophomores do. The B-diggers on homecoming night, as mentioned, cold and windy. And that will affect the passing games. And here is Mendoza's kick. It's a line drive headed to Garcia. Fields it at the 6, straight ahead to the 10, the 15, running to his left to the 20, swings it to the outside, breaks the tackle to the 25, and then he's upended at the 28-yard line. It was a return there of uh, 23 yards before the tackle was made by Cameron Segura, the 5'9", 147-pound senior. And here come the beat diggers to the football field starting at their own 28-yard line. Something they dominated last week was field position. You bet they were once they got in charge of the situation, they kept it and played in the middle of the in the middle of the field at the worst. The setbacks are Tanner Morrow and Connor Weiser. Weiser over 100 yards, not over 100, over 200 last week and scored three touchdowns in a victory over Valley and Gilcrest. First and 10 for the Bee Diggers will call it the 28-yard line, the backs are split. Garcia will hand it off to Weiser, running off right tackle across the 30-yard line, runs into two reds, breaks those tackles, and he's across the 30 to the 32 before the tackle is made by Cameron Segura. So it's a gain of four. The B-Diggers with that talented offensive line, led by center Levi Brenneman, Austin Nichols also in there, Ramon Portese. And we'll introduce you to all the B-Diggers momentarily. Dylan French on that line as well. Derek Lynch is a tight end. The receivers are C.J. Kukas and Shea Hansen in the slot as well. Austin Acosta, of course, second down and six of the 32-yard line. The Bee Diggers on their own side of the field handoff tomorrow, and he bulls his way for a couple of yards right up the guts of the 34, third down and four. Eaton, usually they like to run, line up in like a 4-3 or sometimes even a 3-5 defense. The look that they're giving Brush right now is is a six-man front. So they got six guys right up there on the line of scrimmage, one linebacker in the middle, and then their outside linebackers are playing across from the tight ends, and they're playing a little bit deeper. So, you know, Eaton's right there ready to go, try to stop that run and Brush and make sure they're, they're stopping that outside game with those linebackers that are dropped off. Third and four from the 34-yard line in motion to the left is Shea Hansen. Garcia on the bootleg left. Now he reverses his field. He's in big trouble. He's going to have to run out of bounds. He's going to be sacked back at around the 25, maybe the 26-yard line. He's going to lose eight yards. And it was Seth Selby, the 6'1", 162-pound junior linebacker, that chased him down. And the bead digger certainly struggled on that exchange. It's fourth down and 12. I think that was a design quarterback keeper. It looked like Brush was going to try to hand it off to a, to look like their halfback over here to the left side, and they had their fullback leading, and Garcia pulled the ball out and was just going to follow those guys around the corner. But Eaton had so much penetration that there was no way he could run it that way, and he had turned back against the grain. C.J. Kukas to punt from his own 11, perfect snap, and he gets it off a low-line drive. That'll bounce it around the 47-yard line of Brush, take a huge B-digger roll inside the 45, headed towards the sideline, and out of bounds at the 43-yard line, so a punt of around 33 yards. Eaton takes over with 9.49 to go. No score. This is Eaton's first possession on homecoming night in Brush. And by the way, we thank our videographer tonight, Grayson Simmons, who is shooting some beat digger video for us that hopefully we'll have up here after the game or early tomorrow on KSIR.com slash sports. We'll explain that during halftime. First and 10 for the beat diggers. 
Check that for the Reds outside their own 42-yard line after the Bee Diggers went three and out in a shotgun formation. This will be the challenge for the Eaton Reds. And there's a quarterback keeper up the middle to the 45, across the 50, into the secondary, across the 45 to the 40-yard line. That is Tony Ball, the 6'1", 156-pound junior. He gains 18 before C.J. Kukas makes the tackle. That's a bad sign for the Bee Diggers on the opening play for Eaton. Sure was. Brush lined up in that 4-3 defense, and they had those those linemen up there um, ready to stop the run, but Eaton was able to just spread them apart and run it right over the right side. And It was just a gigantic hole, a, a big enough hole you could drive a car through it. Gaston Fernandez and Dylan French in the middle of that line. Connor Weiser and Derek Lynch as well. Tyson Larrick, Tanner Morrow are the linebackers. Two of the three linebackers, first and ten from the beat digger. 40 man in motion to the left for the Reds. And the quarterback ball this time will hand it off right up the gut and a big hole across the 35 to the 30, down to the 28-yard line. That's a pickup of 12. Shea Hansen makes the tackle on Lucas Short. But the Reds with double-digit gainers on their first two plays and doing a nice job. We'll call it 11 to the 29, but it's first and ten for the Reds with... 9.15 to go in the opening quarter. That was more of an ISO play where they had a a back lined up right there on the left side, right behind the the guard, and then they handed handed it off to their deep back, and he just followed that back right up the hole. Derek Lynch now backs up in that linebacker position. Kyle Muir is on the defensive line. Shotgun formation, first and 10 for the Reds at the beat digger 28-yard line. Man in motion to the right. Ball is going to roll to his left, wants to take off with the football. He pumps, swings it back to the inside, skips out of a tackle at the 25, still on his feet to the 20, a first down inside the 15, closing in on the 14-yard line. It's a gain of 14, and the Reds have three double-digit gainers in a row, and quite frankly, that was just poor tackling by Brush. Yeah, they did a... You know, Eaton just ran out there to the left side, and Ball did that little pump fake to try to try to freeze those linebackers in that corner over there. But Brush had uh, quite a few defenders over there to turn him back upfield, and, and just a lot of guys were over-pursuing and trying to tackle with arm tackles as they ran right by him. C.J. Kuka, Shea Hansen, Bruce Melendez, Brandon Rutherford in that secondary. It is first and ten for the Reds from the B-Digger 14. Shotgun for Ball. Awaits the snap. Long count. Resetting his short in the backfield, and there's the gift of short. He's nailed in the backfield by Dylan French for a loss of three. I think he basically went through unblocked because as soon as short got the ball, and they'll call it the 16-yard line, so a loss of two, second down and 12. French hit him so hard, and he wrapped up, and it's like he had shorts. A face was like right in Dylan French's chest, and he just kind of bear-hugged him and just took him over backwards and put him right on his back. Now I know what Coach Dreitz means by Eaton being the best 0-5 team he's seen because they've looked very good on the first three plays before the B-Diggers made a play. Second down and 12 from the B-Diggers 16-yard line. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Short is the lone setback. Ball has the football rolling to his left, stopping pressure coming, and he's going to be thrown down at the 25-yard line. And the sack by Levi Brenneman. And that's going to be a loss of nine yards in the play, and all of a sudden Eaton has a third and 21. You know, just a good job there by Brenneman as he came across the line. And, you know, it's one of those things when you're a defensive end, you have to maintain that outside-in kind of relationship with the quarterback. And that's exactly what he did. And and a ball wasn't able to to get outside of him, and and Levi just wrapped him up. It'll be third down and 21 with a football resting at the B-Digger 25-yard line. Shotgun formation for ball. Awaiting the snap. Man in motion to the left. And now we've got a flag down. I don't know if the time was running out on the uh, play clock, but it is against the Reds. So now all of a sudden it sets up a third down and 26. 